This has been a really long time since I shot one of these videos, and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing another top 10 series video. Now, at this point, I think it's been like, what, uh, a year or two since I've done one of these videos, and it's finally come down to it where the community's come back around, I'm feeling good about myself, I'm feeling good about my community, about my people, and I decided it's time to do another one. And I, w I was actually, before this, I was actually having a really hard time finding some guys to actually put in the list. And I, I actually was about to make another one. But then one of the guys that I was putting into it, I was looking through his infield as I was breaking it down. And I'll put it this way, not my cup of tea. The guy was not as good as I thought he was and I did not want to put him up. I even made this entire elaborate outro with him too, with him and another guy. And I was looking at it and I was like, man, he's just not, he's just not producing. So I said, well, fuck it. I'll wait it out I'll do it another time. And so guess what? Now is that time, all right? So I have two guys to bring to you guys today. And without further ado, the first one is Austin Summers. Now, Austin Summers is actually, he's a pretty cool guy. He's very good at what he does. And he does two things very well. The first one is actually something that the second guy does really well at himself, it's self amusement. Now, the other thing he does really well is get into the zone consistently. So in this first infield, I'm gonna be breaking down for you guys. In this one, this is what we're gonna be talking about. It's his, it's his ability to get into the zone so you guys can learn off of this. So without further ado, let's get into it. I was looking through Austin Summers' videos right here and I was checking this out and I noticed that he's, so he's getting himself warmed up right now and getting himself in the zone. And this shows consistency. It's actually, consistency is something that a lot of naturals lack. It's like that ability that if I'm out of it, if I don't feel like I'm in the zone, what do I do? How do I get myself to from point A to point B? I'm out of it, how do I get myself here? And it shows like a lot of self-awareness and it makes me realize. So I, I had an ego back in the day where I thought, you know, Austin Summers is good, but I'm better kind of energy. Uh, Austin Summers honestly is pretty, pretty fucking good. Um, in the aspect that he knows what he's doing. He knows how to get himself there and he's consistent. This shows consistency. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, at the time when this video was made, when he shot this, his game was better than mine. I, I don't know where he's at now. He hasn't shot infields too much, uh, too recently, but he's in this video, he's pretty good. And, I, and I'm, like, I'm actually a little bit humbled by that fact. So here, let's get it started. The uh, Scotiabank is? Gotcha. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> it's just a prank. So when you're getting warmed up, you want to like be like high fiving people, joking with people, doing I call them baby approaches, quack, quick, <laughs> quack, quick, fast approaches, quick, fast approaches. Um, so like you're like maybe make a joke with somebody, maybe make a joke over here. You tease around, you play around. Sometimes if you have a good energy off of somebody, like let's say you approach somebody and they give you really good energy and they're this cute girl, of course don't don't continue to to try to get warmed up in the zone because if you do that and you leave this set, you know, eh. if I get negative energy off anybody, like I'm instantly onto the next person. I'm just trying to get myself more social, trying to play around, trying to get my mood up. So it, it's all about momentum. So how is momentum? Momentum is action feeds ego. And micro momentum is what he's building up right here. So he's building up momentum in the night. He's building up momentum tonight. That's called micro momentum. So he's taking like extroverted actions in the course of the night to prove to his subconscious mind, this is who I am. So he's trying to force his ego to align with this. Now. Along with this too is consistent action over a long period of time, going at minimum three times a week, four times a week. Um, it's just about consistency. You, you, you're trying to prove yourself week in, week out that you're extroverted. So when you go out to build momentum when you're out, sometimes you're just in the zone. You're just, I'm already there. You're already in the zone, cool. Um, but sometimes you're like not there, but because you have macro momentum, you can snap yourself into the zone faster. Because you're like, dude, I have all these months of me going out consistently, year, two years, going out consistently, keeping it, banging the drums. And now when I go out, it's so easy to get in the zone. So, guess what? Now you can kind of put yourself in the right headspace. So here, watch this. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. Wow, she was she was moist and bumpy. Making himself extroverted and big, playing around with people. Kind of like uh, moist and bumpy. That's also like a very a like cocky thing to say. It's also very like risking offending others, which is good. You risk offenders. Get it. High five. Get it. Yep. See. High five. Yeah, extroverted trust, action. Uh, I love you. That was pretty gross. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, hi. I just happened to be rolling by. I just happened to be rolling by and I noticed you. Noticing well, I me. I noticed you guys too. And I happened to be noticing you that you noticed me as well. Yeah. yeah. What's your name? Why, why are you rolling? Uh, I just, I like it. Mm. Are, you, are you kissing me? Here, you can sit yeah. down if you want. Wait. Enjoy it, enjoy it. Why are you rolling if you don't need to roll? I, I'm recovering from an injury actually. Yeah. yeah. 
Seriously, right seriously. Here, Look at this pinky swear. Yeah. Are you playing with oh, the band? Kiss it? For real. He's warming so up right now. Oh, You're gonna watch until the sets gets way? better and better. Is it Joanne? Wait, let me grab your number before you go. Wait, four times rule. I'm not chasing you, I'm being pushed. <laughs> Shut up, honestly. Okay. Oh, what one? Guys, do you, do you happen to have a stabilizer for our camera? We're filming in, and we need like a little bit of stabilizer. I have a foam camera. Oh my god, you do? I thought you were going to tell me your phone was going to die. I was like, oh no. It's going to die. Hi, Austin. <laughs> Hi, I'm not really left-handed usually. You Jesus, you have you have some massive hands. hands. Do you play basketball? Oh, shit. Yeah, she did in high school. Uh, you did? See, that's the that's difference that I would do. So I try to always avoid like common things that people say. So him bringing up like the her being tall, like it's very minor, it's so minor. Um, but like when you, when you bring up something that people have heard so many times over and over, uh, it's something that can be like, oh, not this conversation again, or it could put her in her head, it, or it could like be like, oh, I've had this conversation five billion times, and it can like it can perturb a girl enough to where she's not going to like want to like so you bring up how short she is, her race, or this or that. It's like if you're a tall guy or a short guy, or if you're you're you have a certain race, you probably have this in yourself where you remember all the times people bring it up in conversations, all the times like rolling your eyes mentality wise. Like if a girl's tall, I don't bring it up because it also could put her in her head because she's taller than Austin Summers. And if like he brings this up, now she might overthink it. Luckily, he's such a free flowing guy that he can plow underneath it. But it's just, it's a very minor thing. Going on oh, like head. violence? No, no, no. no. Well, sort of. Or just well, guys, well, guys well. like groping people. Exactly. Well, there was a guy who groped me. I didn't tell you this, guys. So I like that because now he's showing that he's socially intelligent to understand the girl's reality. So then the girls feel more comfortable around him. Like he's not gonna be that guy to do that to me. Tell us, it's, this is a safe zone, safe zone. I gave him the and it's also too, because he's like bringing it back and making it more authentic and cool and relaxed. Now he's a part of the social circle. Now all the friends accept him. And because he's, so he's befriending the friends, now because the friends accept him, now it'll be easier for him to actually roll in and, uh, you know, obviously m move it towards any means or ends that he would desire. I think that's the PC way of putting it. We're gonna go with that. Shove, and I was like, you didn't ask me first. And I gave him a shove, and I gave him a shove three times. Can I, can I touch you? Uh, I, I guess. guess. <laughs> I like, no. Yeah, no, that's fine. You know why? She's real tall. She likes herself I the best, too. Hands. She's you like, she's it, like, right. I like it the best, too. Well, you just love yourself. Um, sure. It's good they blew over, like, what she said. So sometimes whenever somebody's trying to speak and you speak over them, and you, like, not don't do it all the time because over the, the top, you're not having like a back and forth conversation. And then it's just you talking at the girl and it'll come across a little more calculating or too dominant and the girl doesn't feel like she can invest. But every so often, like cut a thread. Like right there, she's talking about how tall her friend is. Like it's not gonna help you out to like address that. So just keep talking over over her when she says that. It also shows that you're the one at the at the cause, not the effect of the interaction. He's like, he's like, no. Like, so he goes over the top and keeps saying what he's gonna do. This is the frame we're talking about. That one I don't wanna talk about. Do you know Regent? I hope so. Mm, no. Her last name's like Larson. But I know her, so I am. Your dad's probably a fucking Viking. Six he five. Is. He th yeah. he had. I can see That's that. Mm -hmm. He has like a tomahawk. He just How, throws it at people's skulls. Um, because my foot hurt. Because it picks up chicks. Does it though? You got up pretty quick. This actually does. Because watch, sit down real quick, just right here. Oh. It's the seat of love. Yeah. Again, he's not qualifying. So like a guy would qualify in the situation. So he's not qualifying. Does this pick up chicks? Oh, no, no, no. That's not what I'm doing. He's like, yeah, try it out. He's like, sit down in it. So he's not like, he's not defending himself whatsoever, which is what the girl would actually care about. So all these guys, they think that girls care about this. They care about that. They only care if you, they think you care. So right here, does it look like he cares? Like if the girls think he's picking up chicks or not? Dude, he's a guy. He's a sex driver. He doesn't give a fuck. So because he doesn't, they don't, because he doesn't care about his height in comparison to the girl, because he doesn't care about the, the girls saying, are you picking up chicks or whatever? Like, cause he's just free flowing with it. The girls don't care. Girls only care if they think you care. She doesn't give a, she doesn't give a fuck about his height because he doesn't care about his height. Awesome. Free ride. I'm in. I'm in. Okay, I'm guess before you. So he's not getting in the way of their, their direction. So they're walking this direction anyway. So it's, if, if he tried to walk the opposite direction the way they were going, that would like honestly slow down quite a bit. But they're also making it fun and free flowing, so it's not like this logical frame, so he can do this. See, it's okay. You're an amazing sister. Really? Are you wasted? I not hope you're not. I'm so Oh good. my god, I love sober girls. We Dude, you probably just meditate, all, don't you? All the time. All the time. Yeah. I always roll yeah. this guy. That's so amazing. Three times a day. I think you're the one. What's your name? What the fuck? 
Seriously, one more time. It's okay, time. you're done. I'm so, cutting you off. All right. If I had legs, you're, I'd be able to. <laughs> you're still kidding on me. Yeah. Yeah, I am. You're right. Okay, yeah. I, I don't want to stop. It feels. It's a disqualifier. That's why that works. So a disqualifier. He's he's risking losing her. And he's also like playing up, like like kind of joking around with it in a good way. Just riding. Okay. Let me know if your legs, That's like the circulation, gets job. cut off. No, no, it's all good. How tall are you, by the way? Six feet. Oh my god. It's terrible. I love it. Put in for these. Wedges. Thursday night wedges. I want to see you on Friday night with your little stilettos. Come out tomorrow. She's gonna be so cute. She is. It's your best friend. These two. Oh. You guys want to come to the rooftop? Yep. Okay, so at this point, obviously, he's just trying to lead the interaction forward, get somewhere where he can get in private. So this is just basically him getting logistics, finding out what's going on. He's asking, is this your friend, best friend? Yeah, cool. She's coming with. We're on the roof. I'm yeah. so down. You can see everything. I'm so down. Now, if this was like a logical conversation versus maybe, say, <clears throat> a very, like, as this one is a very emotional one, the logical one, the girl would be more on the conservative frame. Now, with the one that he takes on, he's classically part of, is that he has a very emotional style of game. Very funny, carefree, adventurous way of speaking. And because he's very adventurous, he's not very logical, this kind of stuff happens. All right, guys, I hope you guys learned a lot from that one right there. The next guy is pretty fantastic. He's actually a really good friend of mine. I, I've actually gamed with a lot of these guys. I, I even... Uh... <laughs> I've run through by Austin a few times in the club. Well, this guy right here is actually a very close friend of mine. His name is A.G. Hayden. Or as some of you guys know him as, Avery Hayden or A.G. Now, A.G., he does some things fantastically. So he has this ability to both make somebody feel like you can just be yourself and authentic and free flowing with them, which is something that I think a lot of guys nowadays get wrong. You guys are trying to play this conservative game where you guys are like, I'm going to be perfect. I'm gonna like play the perfect game where I'm like, I'm not sure how much money I make. I'm not sure this perfect job, this incredible lifestyle. But guess what? When you start doing this, is the girl going to want to be authentic with you? you do you think like when, when you come across this way, the girl's gonna be like, I can definitely be myself without judgment around this guy. No. Well, AG, he has this ability to one, come across very intelligent, come across very well put together, while at the same time coming across as a complete fucking mess in the right way. So when a girl talks to him, she's like, this is the guy that I can admire and respect, but at the same time too, he's not gonna judge me. He's not gonna judge me. It's not It's not gonna be like that weird situation where I'm around the, the rich billionaire famous guy and I gotta be perfect and premium and proper. No, I could be a mess with this guy too. And you know what? I can also look at myself and just really like, see myself next to this guy. He, he does all this myriad of different things so well. And, and I'll say this too, he, he has this ability to push things harder than I've seen Kai's in the past. So I've gamed with this guy now for a year and the way he pushes himself and is capable of doing things in game that a lot of guys be too much, too much more pussy to do, he does without hesitation. And this is why this guy right here in particular is gonna probably be one of the best in the game in the next five years. So without further ado, let's break him down. All right, so this is actually a set that I ended up approaching and Avery came in on. Avery was the one that was mic'd. Um, it was a pretty easy going set. It's just two attractive uh, strippers. And um, we walked up, uh, I said hi to the one, the girl started cock blocking. So Avery being a good wing, he rolled in and started saying hi to her. Uh, I, I'd won the girl over, I was talking to pretty fast. Um, and then uh, when Avery rolled around, Avery did the same thing with his. and. This interaction is Avery walking into the set right now as uh, as we get started and it gets into the full swing of things. That's my friend. Hi. Why? Hi. We're you trying lost? to get to Resort World. Resorts World. Whatever, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I live here. I literally live here. Why are you going here. to Resorts World? Because I parked there because it's free and I'm like, where am I? It's pretty cool, Sam. Uh, I know it's across the street, but how do I get to the street? It's always been a problem for me. Because I've always felt like I belong to the streets, but it's hard to find the streets. You do belong to the streets, I can tell. I do. That's my ex voice. So, how old is that look? You look like you could be young, but you also like you. So she's immediately shit testing a little bit. So do you see how she walked away like that? And uh, he did something really cocky. He's like, I belong to the street. So, and he said it in a very nonchalant way, like he wasn't trying too hard. And he knows how he's not even giving her eye contact at times. Let her kind of draw her in. 
So there's like multiple ways to use eye contact, but a big thing with Avery here is, is that he is a vacuum of qualification this moment. He did uh, take a step in to draw the girl back in, and as soon as she she squared back up, he went back to doing his uh, same gambit. You know what? I'm okay with that because Alexander Skarsgård is so hot that his brother has at least be half as hot, no, right? he's really hot. Like, he's really hot. I just, I didn't know if he was, so I was like, eh. Don't tell him that. That's so insulting. You come up with the moat, like, you look like... So do you see how she's constantly, like, taking, like, she's, she's switching weight between foot to foot? She's, uh, she's squaring up. She's, like, she can't sit still. Uh, it's because she's nervous around AG. And she keeps looking to her girl because she's because she does feel nervous. She's kind of like wanting to uh, eject slightly, but not because. But she is attracted to Avery. It's it's a very interesting set. Avery's doing this perfectly. Enough like back on the qualification. Enough joking. Enough teasing. Enough being free of outcome. And the girl is now starting to become attracted. She actually is like been a, she's been associating him with uh, actors that she personally finds attractive. So she's so whenever girls do that, they're like she's basically backwards rationalizing now why she finds you attractive. Oh, he looks like a magician. Like, what guy ever wants to say, oh, I, I'm like a magician? What magician has ever been sexy? Um, See how she can't sit still? No, 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 no. Chris Angel. Oh, by the way, Avery has amazing tone. Uh, him and me practices all the time. He has a very good bass. Uh, he speaks a lot from his diaphragm. He uses a lot of pauses. He is using his eye contact correctly. He's having moments of stillness in the conversation. He's using pauses. He's not speaking fast, he's not speaking long strings. It's nothing but him just letting the vibe be natural, authentic, leaving vacuum so the girl can invest. And she's investing. So what do you do? Are you a magician's assistant? No, I'm an ultrasound type. Interesting. I'm, yes, I'm an ultrasound type. By the way, interesting is a really great line to anything. That's what I do. I've, I've, had, to that with, I've had to deal not with that. that. I, it's, it's a stress. So one of the things that Avery's really good at is baiting for the girl to start chasing. So like, what does he do? Interesting. And he doesn't like say it's good or bad. He just says interesting. It's a really good line to use for anything. He doesn't even say interesting and then explain himself. He just said interesting. So now guess what? Now the girl's in her head about her work. She's like, wait, is that not good enough? And now she's qualifying. It's great. Although blue. It's your great pupils are a little blue. bigger. Dude, my mom. Why are your pupils so big? Yeah, so now what he's doing is he's like, um, she, she keeps trying to talk over him, and what does he do? He just keeps going with whatever he's saying. That's one of the things that Avery's really good at. He has a really good sense of self-esteem. He has really good boundaries. So this girl's trying to interrupt him. He's like, no, 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 I'm gonna keep talking. Like, he doesn't like put this girl above him in value. Uh, and right there, he just, uh, he, let me actually rewind this a little bit because he just did something really good there. Here. Dude, my mom. Why are your pupils so big? What's they're always there? big, so I'm, my mom, like, growing up. So basically all he did right there was trying to bait her to start qualifying further. So another thing that he does really well is both with his tone and the way he acts is he can bait to qualify. He's really good at that specifically. Um, he, <laughs> he does a lot with me, actually. Uh, the fucker, like, does it almost even subconsciously at times. Um, Avery's level of intelligence is actually at such a level, a lot of what he does is decently um, subconscious. Uh, I've seen the guy, like I've actually played his infield in slow motion at times and he's doing so many things so fast and you can read his facial cues and you can see what he's doing at any given moment and it's it's really cool because he can like, he'll do a read and then he'll make an immediate action to the read. He always thought I was on drugs, my pupils are oh, I'd always, be suspicious. My I'd be pupils suspicious. are always huge. I, I get that a lot too. I see think now she's qualifying. Maybe that's why like I'm like... <clears throat> So just to fill people in too, the more whoever qualifies to the other is always the one that is supplicating, is always the one putting themselves below the other. So action feeds ego. She keeps qualifying over and over. Eventually her ego is going to be like, I must like this guy. You know what I mean? Now she's going to take action aligned with that of liking the guy. Anxiety? So if you get a girl qualifying enough, she's going to like you. I mean, you're enlightened. I'm hyper focused. That's, that's the other thing. Everything. It means you're super present. Always. And because you're present, you're taking in more. Of course, dude. I notice everything, and that's why I have anxiety. Do you do meditation, or? I do meditate, but it's honestly. He's further uh, baiting her to qualify, so he's now rewarding her. For me to keep my mind quiet. But that's how you know you need to meditate. See, so he gave her two different outs. So he gave her one option that was bad and then one option that was good. And now what she do? She takes the option that's good. Now she's further qualifying. So he baited her little by little to start qualifying more and more. Now he's put, now he's getting like uh, now he's getting the the, the steam rolling. He's building momentum with it. Fair. Fair. It's like if I can't run a mile, I know I need to work out. It's the well, same fucking thing. Well, there you go. I 
know. I'm I, huge into meditation. I actually do meditation research, so. Really? Yeah. I used to do like yin yoga, if you're familiar, which is like the candlelight, like very quiet yoga. Uh -huh. But meditation is honestly kind of hard good too. for me. That's good I'm too. Because I'm kind of manic, you know what I mean? Like I'm kind of like. That's how you know you need it. That's how you know you need it. That's how you know you need it. Like the worse it is when you do it, the more you know you need it. Like if it, you hate it, that's how you know you need it. I don't hate it. <laughs> but if you feel but like, oh, hard. I can't do it, it's so much, it, it's that's hard. how you know you need it. It's of 100%. course, of course, but it's like, how do I, how do I make that step? Patience, patience. No, no, I don't have patience. That's my worst that's trait. That's what meditation is, I don't have patience. You is that's my problem, is my patience. worst trait, is that I'm not patient. That's how you develop it. No. I want everything when I want it, and I always get it when I want it. Yeah, so, so why you know do that's I need a problem. Patience? That's a problem of the modern human being. Why do I need patience if I can get it when I want it? Because first of all, a lot it. of that's an illusion. Second of all, it's all dopamine. Third of all, it's all fake as fuck. You know what? I'm. You know what? I don't, you, I don't like, like waiting. What, if I have getting to. things you want is not what makes you happy. No. All right, so right now he is uh, risking offending her to put out an honest, so he's not being like a yes man. She's like, I get what I want when I want it. And now immediately, what does he start doing? He starts dissing on her about it. And he's like basically saying in a very clever way, not in a way that's like gonna like set, set her ego off, but in a way it's like, oh, you're just like everybody else. And what does every girl not want to be? She doesn't want to be like everybody else. Oh. And New Earth. Oh my God, it's four in the fucking morning. I mean, that does happen in Vegas, right? Yeah, Where where do you live? I'm living here. So she's asking because she's trying to get logistics. She wants to fuck. It was actually funny too because she has a boyfriend. You're local? I've been living here for about eight months. Where are so you from? I'm from Phoenix. You see how he's like distracted on his phone? It's actually something I've seen Julian do quite a bit. And Avery does this all the time too. She's like hardly keeping his attention. So now guess what? He's on the phone. Now she's chasing him for validation. So he got enough of a hook in her mouth. And now he's like, now he can do what he wants. Now he's like basically you know, being like, you're boring me. And what does this girl want? She's been chasing for validation this entire time. And he's just keeping it just out of reach. To be honest, in retrospect, looking at his game, uh, a lot of it is based around getting qualification. Okay, that's cool. Is and Phoenix worth visiting? Yeah, 100%. Thinking... Uh, you, like, you, you wouldn't want to live there unless you really like, like, rich, old, blonde people. So if I want a sugar daddy. Or move, sugar mommy. Or mommy, move to Phoenix. No assumptions. If you want there. either, then yes, that is the place no, to go. No, I'm kidding. I would never rely on someone else for money. I can make my own money, bye. Like if you look at who's moving the most, you can always see like, so they're called pacifying behaviors. Whoever's moving the most is always the person that's qualifying usually. Um, I mean, not always. There's decisive movements to, to express yourself the way I'm trying to do right here right now, to like using my hands to express, like that, that makes sense. But what she's doing is different. It's to get rid of anxiety and to distract herself because she's feeling a little bit in her head in comparison to AG. So who's qualifying to who? She's qualifying to him. Moon, yes. <gasps> I'm the side. I'm a Sag Moon, and I don't know how much you know about it, but babe, I'm into a Moon is actually a lot of times oh, no. more relevant than your sun. I'm a Sag Sun, Virgo Moon, and Rising. My whole chart is all Virgo, so I'm a Virgo ass bitch, which would explain the. I'm a Sag Moon. See, yeah, she's not touching on him. I tried right to before help she was like turning her back to him. She's not holding. That was me. She was holding his arm there no, a second I tried ago. To make out with him. And she's and chasing him like trying to back. building rapport with her tongue. No. I was trying to help her out because she said, oh, you both are saying he creeped us out, right? He tried, no, you he said he tried to make out with you. You said he tried I to make out with you. I no, he jumped on me. Like, so like predatory vibes. I, like, and I got that. I so, him so I was trying to, to be a bro. And what I did is I leaned in to make out with so him. To, did he to, lean back? And yeah, he said, I'm bi. Oh. <laughs> like, he told me that. This guy's hitting on them, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on him harder. He said it in a reverse. I'm gonna hit on him harder, and then he tried to make out with me back, and I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, and I pushed his head away. Yep. Yeah. All right, so from here, uh, we end up walking up the way, go back to the hotel. So big thing with AG, you guys got to realize, he's very self amused. He does a lot of baiting for qualification. He's a vacuum of qualification. He's very good at making people play his game. He's very smart. AG, AG's blessed with like, uh, with a very, in, he's, he's very, very intelligent. Uh, so he can kind of play that to his advantage. And it, it's, it gives a lot of value for him. So um, Avery's also, he's very polished and like he, he studies a lot, reads a lot of books. So he knows what he's talking about when it comes down to these subjects. But did you hear like how he used the lack of like 
filler words, and then she was using a bunch of filler words like um, ah, uh, building rapport with her tone. She was she was switching back and forth, and a lot of times he's pretending like to be almost like bored, playing his phone, texting, looking at his drink as if his drink was more important than the girl, uh, going back and forth, basically just baiting, baiting, baiting. And guess what? As she little by little was taking action, as the ego works, the, the action feeds the ego. You start taking enough action, and eventually. The ego follows and then the ego feeds back into the action, which you see right here. So now the ego is aligned and now action feeds ego, ego feeds action. The ego right now is feeding the action and they want to like hang out with us. My final point I want to make about the whole community and about this industry in general is this. Uh, when, when this whole COVID thing came down, like immediately after this whole like pickup um, lynch mob came around and we started having a lot of issues in regards to dating coaches, pickup artists, men's, like people helping men out with dating. And a lot of guys like kind of falling out of this whole thing and going into finance coaching. Uh, no offense, but a lot of you guys went into finance coaching. Uh, you guys were bitches. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say it like that, but you guys are bitches. Um, in my personal opinion, if you're doing this, you're not doing this for money. You're not doing this to try to, to coerce people into like, yes, give me my mansion. I want a Ferrari. I want a private jet so I can fly from city to city. No, you do this because you want to help people out. And for you guys who watch this, here's the thing. We might not always be here for you guys. I might not be here making these videos for you forever. Something might happen to me. Um, maybe YouTube takes me down or something else takes me out. And when that happens, are you guys gonna be like, the community is dead, there's no, I can't go out and approach anymore. I, I must say this, I went out during this whole COVID period. I went out during this whole like, this whole pan, this whole period where like people were attacking dating coaches and men's and pickup artists. And I'll say this, a lot of you guys that kind of fell off, you guys weren't willing to give yourselves permission when, when I take guys on, on boot camp, it's funny how much more you guys will be willing to approach when there's a guy that you trust to push you to approach. But why don't you trust yourself the same way you would trust me? That you approach, uh, that I trust another coach. Why, why can't you trust yourself in the same way? See, th that's the energy that's gonna make you good at this. And, and one day, we not, might not be here. Whether there's a guy on YouTube talking to you guys through a camera or not, you guys have to be there for yourselves. You guys can't be like waiting for me, like my stupid ass, to tell you, yes, it's okay to go say hi to a pretty girl. It's okay to put your intent out there. It's okay to be an authentic human being and to like actually say what you're feeling in your soul. To be free, to be fun in a social interaction, to like not have to feel confined. You don't need me for that. You need you. You need to be the same character. You need to be willing to give yourself permission because one day I might not be there for you. I might not be here anymore. All right, everything moves, everything to, uh, everything passes. Eventually, things decay and rot. And when that decays and rots, and all you have left is yourself, can you trust you? Because if you can't, what else is there? You're just gonna sit down like and just give up? That's my problem with this. That's the, I, I've seen this so many times, and it's actually a big reason why I'm making this video right now. Because I, I feel like you guys watching this video right now, who are like, who are like, intent, writing down notes and whatnot. If I was not here telling you it's okay to do this, you guys wouldn't. All right, some of you guys need to be willing to take my place. Not just not just for me, but for others. One day, something might happen to me. And, and when that happens, you guys need to be there for those other people. Be there for your people. Be there for yourself. Tell yourself it's okay. I can be me, I can be I can be a 12 out of 10. I can be incredible. I can do things that when, when somebody tells me I can't, and somebody says that I'm not supposed to, when, when I know in my soul, it's, it's, it's all right, it's okay, and I'm doing, and I'm like doing nothing but putting good out in the world. Are you gonna let them like quell you and put you down to a little ember when you're a fucking burning, roaring fire beforehand? Fuck that. Have belief in yourself, okay? You don't need me for that. Yeah. With that being said, peace. I don't believe in destiny. I just do what's best for me. Don't listen to my enemies. They're just full of jealousy. Yeah, this legacy. You gon' see what's left of me. You gon' see success in me. You ain't seen the rest of me. I just me. wanna be the best at what I know. Better than the rest, just watch me grow. Put me to the test and watch me go. This is my quest, I'ma make it known. They call me obsessive, oh I know. Call me selective with my notes. Call me aggressive with my flow. Call me offensive, even though. Joe, I ain't gonna lie, life's tough. Try to get by, life's rough. Try to do it right, it's not enough. Even though you try, you still mess up. But I'm still gonna fight for what I love. Still gonna die for what I love. Still gonna try, I won't give up. Still gonna fight until I've won. They say I'm way too obsessed and I've got nothing left. And I'm not quite there yet But those words they'll regret Cause I've got something left And I'm not giving in I will not let them win I won't stop to
till the end, no. Still, he, she still knew. Then I see her friend from 10, 10 miles away. How did I know that? 